Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where what I really want to do is just go in through the data cleaning best practices. Data cleaning is an essential but often ignored part of data preparation, uh, making sure that you actually have quality and reliable data sets that are consistent, accurate, and ready for decision-making processes is crucial to actually making the right decisions from those processes. Uh, but a lot of people don't really think about the data cleaning processes, even though it's 80% of your data lifecycle. Uh, most of the actual work that goes into you know, a really pretty uh, reporting dashboard is done within the data cleaning stage. So what I want to go through today is not only kind of go through the different steps of the data cleaning lifecycle, but break each down, talk about what you're actually doing in each stage of your life cycle and give you some example code that you can use to implement those data cleaning steps within your own data pipelines. Um, so really it's going to be kind of a, all, one, a 101 guide for everything data cleaning. So you'll walk out of here with all the tools you need to start implementing data cleaning uh, within your own pipelines and for your own data. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first step of any data cleaning process is actually understanding your data. You can't clean your data if you don't know what you want or what is contained within your data sets. Um, and so at its very basics, you're going to want to know what kind of values are in there, uh, what kind of intended use you're going to have downstream, and what data points you actually need within a data set. Because a lot of times you won't need a lot of the data points that are included within a raw data set when it's first produced from a source system. So your first step of data cleaning is going to be identifying things like missing values, inconsistencies, duplicates, outliers, invalid entries, and just making sure that your data set lines with its intended use and will produce meaningful results. So you know, if you have a data set that has missing customer emails or inconsistent date formats, that means when you try to link you know, uh, purchases to a customer, you might not be able to downstream. Um, and are really just a couple simple commands that are useful for loading a data set and expecting its structure in Python. Um, this is through Pandas. So Pandas, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it is just kind of a de facto standard for data manipulation within Python. Um, but here the first step is you know, just loading a data set via Pandas, uh, making it available as a data frame. And then data frame info, describe, and head will give you all the kind of high level information around what is the shape of this data set, uh, what does this data set contain, what are the initial uh, you know, five values within this data set. So you can get a quick idea of, hey, what's contained here? What is this data telling me? Um, and then you can start with actually diagnosing and going through the rest of the data cleaning processes. But first step, as simple as it is, is just looking at your data, understanding what's contained within it, and then using that to inform what needs to actually be done to clean up and improve the data. So once you have your data loaded, is starting to implement some checks for some of those basic kind of things like missing values. So easy way to check for missing values is by uh, typing in data frame is null, sum, and this will check for any missing values and print them within the log here. Um, and just making sure, hey, are there any missing values? Um, another thing that might occur in SKU na analysis is duplicates. And here you can use data frame duplicated to identify any duplicated rows. Um, and this will tell you the number of duplicates. Um, and then also, another thing that can also distort results are things like outliers. Um, and these are values that are really, really far outside of the normal range of those values. And by nature of them being extremely out far they're outside of the normal values, they skew the results of the rest of them. And so a good way you could implement that is by using the entire interquartile range method. Um, so essentially what you're doing here is you're taking the quantiles, so the 25th, 75% of your data set, and then identifying any values that are a standard deviation outside of those, of those two you know, quartile ranges. So values that are really far below or above your standard range. Um, and then this will print out a list of all the different outliers within that data frame, so you have an understanding of what outliers are. So, now that we've identified, you know, kind of what issues might be within our data set, it's not enough to just identify them. We actually are going to need to figure out how to handle them. And so you don't want to have to be constantly checking the data and looking at it and actually doing this manually. What you're going to want to do is develop automated processes that handle missing data in structured ways. Um, so one really simple approach is just to drop any rows or columns that have missing values. Um, so drop NA will drop any missing values, um, any rows, and then if there's any columns that have missing values, you can also drop the entire column there as well. 
However, if you don't just want to, you know, drop any missing values, but you actually want to just fill in a dummy value, you have some other options there. Um, and so sometimes you won't want to drop the entire row or whole column just because there's a few missing values because the rest of the data is still valuable. And so that's where you can do something like this. So input missing values with the average of a column um, or just get, fill a, any missing values with a constant, you know, like zero here um, instead of just a blank or null value. Um, now, finally, you also can use predictive models. Um, this is, you know, kind of a little bit more advanced um, to actually check and handle missing data and then fit missing values that are, would be expected to be there. Wouldn't really recommend this unless you're really experienced with computer learning models, but I just thought it is something interesting that is possible. So this is the K nearest neighbors, and essentially what this will try to do is using the rest of the data set, figure out, hey, what should be in this location? Um, but definitely not something you know, I recommend for every single data set. Um, and so that's how you handle missing values. The next step is actually handing, uh, removing duplicates. And so there's a couple different ways you can handle that. Um, number one, just drop duplicates. So just drop duplicate rows. Um, but then you can also drop duplicates based on specific columns. So maybe you actually don't care if there's duplicates in some columns, but you do care in another. So you, know, you want customer ID to be unique, but you don't care if a bunch of customers are buying the same item. Then you can just drop duplicates you know, in column one if this, in col if this was customer ID only dropping duplicate customer IDs, but not ones where you know, multiple customers purchase the same item. Um, now for outliers, you know, because outliers can dist dis distort data distributions and affect model accu accuracy, they're a little bit harder to detect for. So you're gonna want to you know, use sometimes you know, model, statistical models like Z-scores or IQR, but you can also just cap or transform outliers instead of removing them outright. Um, so here, what you can do is actually cap outliers at specific thresholds. So this is where you can set an upper and lower bound for values and say, hey, anything that's over this range, uh, just exclude this from the data set and drop it. Um, or you can do transformations, so you can actually log transform. So if you take the log of a data set, um, that even if there are outliers, that's one way of kind of reducing the impact of them um, and basically logging them to be on a more standard distribution. Um, this is really useful for some use cases, not so great for others, um, but useful if you know you really have a really widely distributed data set and logging it can actually help reduce kind of the uh, perceived distance between those different data points. Um, so that's how you kind of handle those three main issues, you know, on just raw data coming in, having missing values, duplicates, and, and also outliers. Next step you're gonna wanna do is doing things like standardizing data sets or data formats. Um, if you have inconsistent data formats, that can really easily cause issues with transformations, integrations, and analysis, um, especially like inconsistent date formats or categorical data with varying cases. Um, and there's a few different methods within Python just to convert those to a standard format. Um, so PD to date time, this will convert you know, your date column to a standardized date format. Um, there's also things like, hey, if I want to standardize text data, you can convert text data column um, by, so this would take any data, convert it all to lowercase, and then strip any white space from it as well. Um, so standardizing your text data, and there's a bunch of different functions for however you want to standardize the cleanup of your text or numerical data. Um, and those are you know, kind of just all the building blocks for standardizing and cleaning your data. Now, there's also some ways that you can kind of define more uh, complex data quality checks like great expectations, things like that, but they're effectively just taking these and converting them into a standard template and then running them over a long series of time. To just kind of show you an example of what something like that would look like, this is where you, know, you would import from Create Expectations or Soda or whatever data quality tool you're using and then apply a series of checks. So this lets you, instead of having to develop all logic yourself in Python, um, you can leverage Great Expectations or Soda for some of their pre-built uh, data quality checks, so expect column values not be null, expect column to exist, expect column values to be unique, and then pass certain column values, uh, you know, just additional tooling. So things you can do with just, you know, pandas and raw Python, but is made a little easier, um, you know, and has a little bit more complexity with tools like Great Expectations. Um, now, additionally, you also have options like, let's say you want to do feature engineering. Um, that's where what you'd want to do is, you know, hey, I want to clean my data and then also 
figure out what are the predictive values of my data because I want to eventually use this for machine learning. That's where you can do something very simply like just, hey, pulling out from that date time into a year or month so you have a more easily convertible timestamp for machine learning. Um, there are also, uh, you know, if you're using something like DBT or you have, uh, you know, any kind of SQL transformations you're doing, you can also integrate tests within SQL. So new.sql. And so here, what you want to do in something like DBT is define the same style of tests, but just within SQL code rather than Python. So here, selecting all of our customer IDs, and then from that, um, choosing any customer IDs that have over one count, so anything that isn't unique, bringing that out and exposing it to me. So this is you know example of a way you can integrate data cleaning or check, at least data checks into something like a DBT pipeline if you're not too experienced with Python. Um, and then another thing you might want to consider is, hey, if you're standardizing data formats across different sources, um, there's things you're going to want to do like, hey, I want to merge a data set, but I want to actually resolve it using rules. So here you can actually combine first, so prioritize source A over source B. So this is an example of merging two data sets. So if you have you know conflicting names, like different names to the same entity, you can say, hey, always consider data source A over data source B as the source of truth. Um, so if you expect there to be some duplicates, but you know that one is the source of truth and one isn't, great way to automate that process, you know, to figure out, hey, which ones work, which ones don't. Um, and then also, if you're trying to ensure things like referential integrity, so for relational data sets, make sure that foreign keys match the primary keys in parent tables. You can say, hey, I want to actually check that data frame foreign key is in primary table data frame uh, primary key, so you can actually check for references and have all this automated. Um, and then when it comes time to actually you know, package all your data cleaning up, instead of having just disparate Python uh, calls here, what you'd want to do is build a function like this, you know, some clean data where you take in a data frame, run all of your different data cleaning steps, and then you can integrate this into a pipeline like Airflow or any other kind of tool, run this Python script on a standardized basis. And then you'll also know, hey, I have this one script that's going to produce all the results I need for understanding this data set, cleaning it, um, or flagging anything that I need to clean manually. Um, and then other options, so if, if you're using something like PySpark, which a lot of people are for, for data processing, um, similar processes there. You're just going to want to, one second, yep, load in PySpark, pretty much Spark, Flink, they all have similar tools to do things like this. So in Spark, you know, you're just loading the Spark session using the drop duplicates. Something like Flink, you will be, you know, doing this in a stream execution environment if you want to do this data transformation on a, or, you know, cleaning on a piece by piece state basis. Um, but whether you're doing it on a per record basis or a per, you know, data set basis, same things still apply. Um, and then finally, one thing you also can do is once you have you know those cleaning data functions done you also can have testing missing value handling and write unit tests around your data cleaning processes so if you want to make sure that you're still achieving the desired results and making sure hey or someone wants to design a new data cleaning process this is a good mechanism for testing that process giving a kind of simulated data where you know hey if it does it right this outcome in this case making sure there's all in some of all null values is going to be zero. So if this hadn't cleaned it, then this would be one and it would assert that, hey, no, this has actually failed. Um, my data cleaning process has not worked properly. Um, so that's really everything you need to know for getting started and building out your data cleaning methodology. All the building blocks are there. It's all really easy to do um, and it's really important to do. But automate it all with Python so you don't actually have to do it all manually. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.